Welcome to this tutorial series on creating a geographic-based custom region for the game SimCity 4. This tutorial series will walk through all the steps necessary to start from gathering geographical data all the way to importing it in-game. There's many different routes one can take through this process, from an interpretive map all the way to something that is scale accurate. While this series is intended for the game SimCity 4, much of this process can be applied to creating maps in other games as well. This is a nuts and bolts series meant for beginners, so we're going to take a very metered approach and discuss all the steps in detail. First thing we should talk about is just what kind of map will be needed. We need to have a very specific type of image, which is why we have the grayscale image. This is a grayscale representation of the elevation of the world. Anything that's in black in a grayscale image will be the lowest elevation possible, while anything in white will represent the highest elevation possible, with everything in the middle being differentiated shades of gray. In addition to the elevation data, we also need to be mindful of the pixel size of the images we're creating, as that will become important later down the process line. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just what is a DEM, a D-E-M. A DEM is a digital elevation model. It's information that contains two different data sets. It's got information regarding coordinates in space, latitude and longitude, and it's going to contain information about elevation. And it's going to combine those two things in a way that describes elevation across a two-dimensional image. A DEM has two basic types of data storage vector data and raster data. A way to consider the difference between the two, consider vector data similar to a three-dimensional game, polygons, and raster data is like pixels. A raster data will represent that grid coordinates and height information in terms of dots, whereas vector data is more about irregular shapes, like polygons. Most downloads for DEMs are going to be contained in some kind of library archive, whether it's a zip, or a RAR, or a similar archive. Several of the DEM readers are able to directly read from these, but there are those that aren't, so you'll need to unpack your archives. Some of the common file types contained within those archives are IMG files, which are in themselves very similar to an archive. An ADF file is a raster data file that contains points on the grid without an actual map. ASC files are using the ASCII grid formats. A BIL file is a type of arc grid file. A .dem file is a digital elevation model file. An HGT file was produced using a special method of acquiring elevation data from the space shuttle, and that's the SRTM process, and it represents height information. And finally, we have PNGs and tagged image file formats, or TIFFs. These two are actual image files. They're not just data files. These ones will actually have some kind of converted image. These files can be read in a typical image viewer, whereas the other image types cannot. Now, while there are many different types of file formats that we can expect to come across, there's no specific one that's going to be better or worse than the others. They're just different formats that various entities will use to compact and compress their files for distribution. And the same goes with vector and raster data. It doesn't necessarily mean it's worse or any better than the other. It just means that that's going to be the most likely type of data you're going to come across. Now that we've had a chance to look over our various types of DEM data, now we need to figure out where we're going to actually pull that data from. There are several locations where one can get DEM data for free without having to purchase it. Our first up here is the earthexplorer.usgs.gov. Here we have a world map where we can pull world data from. More specifically, if we're looking for data from the continental US, we have the nationalmap.gov. This one's going to contain better data for the continental US than we would find on the Earth Explorer. An additional website offering free DEM data is the viewfinder panoramas.org. This one has a grid set up, and anytime you select one grid, it will automatically download that grid's data in an HDT file for you. This website is nice for its easeability, where you don't have to spend time sifting through details and sifting through file formats in order to get what you want. It's a quick and simple, easy website to use. Topographical data doesn't just end with the Earth. 
If we go to astrology.usps.gov, here we have the Mars MOLA data, which contains high-resolution data of the topography of Mars. So if Cohagen's calling, you can make your way to Mars. You could be the first to colonize Mars using the Mars MOLA data. Beware, the original data on this is very large. It's an 11 gigabyte file. So if you are going to attempt that, you are going to have to do some data compression before you can get any kind of usable map out of that. Now that we've figured out where we can find our map data, now we need to figure out what our map data is going to represent for us and what we want out of it. Much of the map data is going to be represented in arc second resolution. Most data from Earth Explorer is going to contain either three arc second or one arc second data. And this is going to have a resolution down to 90 to 30 meters. So each pixel of data is going to represent 30 meters of space. The SRTM data is some of the best worldwide DEM data available. However, due to the angle that the space shuttle had to create the projections from, there is missing data at high elevation mountain points. From the USGS National Map website, even higher resolution DEM data is available, including one-third arc second images that have a 10 meter resolution and select areas across the U.S. with one-ninth arc-second data, which provides down to a 3.4 meter resolution. All data from the USGS national map will have complete data without any void zones, even in mountainous regions. Additional DEM data can be found on the JAXA website that was gathered using the ASTER method. The ASTER method differs from the SRTM data in that it is able to gather data from mountainous regions without issue, but it has difficulty defining data in extreme snow and cloud cover. So to recap, we can expect DEM data to come from several different sources, including SR, TM data, ASTER process data, and LIDAR. They can be broken down in resolution anywhere from 3 to 1 to 1 3rd to 1 9th arc second in terms of resolution. One by one, we're going to step through the process to see how we acquire our data. We're going to start with our easiest process here on the Viewfinder website. And I'm going to select the area around Seattle here, labeled L10. And by clicking on that square, you can see it pulled up a download link for me. So I'm just going to click Save. And just that simply, I have downloaded data from the Viewfinder website. Next up, I have the national map. And here it's a little bit more of an involved process. Over here we have a map. I can click and drag. So I'm going to center over that Seattle area and use the zoom in option and zoom in several times. So now I have my Seattle area kind of center on my map. Over here we have two different options. We have elevation products and we have elevation source data. I'm going to unselect elevation source data as I only want elevation products. These are going to be final images that I can make use of. You can see we have three main file formats here. We can pull an arc grid, a grid float, or an IMG. I'm going to stick with arc grid as we know that is our ADF file format. Up here we can have, we can select all the different types of data possible, but knowing ahead of time that one third arc second is available for the whole continental US, I'm going to stick to just wanting to submit for that data. And I click my Find Products. And here it generates a list of all the available DEM data that I can download relative to our selected area. All of these are going to be listed. They're at USGS NED data, representing one third arc second. And it's going to show me where on the grid it represents. So this particular file is going to represent North 48 and 117 West. And if I click on this little footprint, it's going to create a box around that area. I can also click on thumbnail, and it's going to give me a thumbnail represent representation of the height elevation data in that particular area. Unfortunately, it doesn't put these in any particular order, so you will have to spend some time scrolling to find the specific map tile you're looking for. Identified, I'm looking for 48 north, and this one in particular is 123 West, and that happens to encompass our area around Seattle. And you can see we have a lot of inland bays and lowland areas, but there are a little bit of mountains here and some highlands there and there. And now that I have identified the area, I will click on download. 
And you can see it's going to save it into a RAR zip file. So it's a compressed archive. While the adage is that less is more, in the case of data, unfortunately, it's the other way around. So from our website, the Earth Explorer, our download was only about 20 megabytes. Whereas here on the USGS national map, most of these arc graded IMG formats are going to download even compressed at 300 megabytes. That means that the DEM data found on the USGS national map and Earth Explorer websites are going to contain considerably more information to work with in finite details than the information available on the viewfinder website. What it boils down to is how much detail you're going to need to complete your map to your level of satisfaction. Moving on to Earth Explorer. For the sake of consistency, we're going to keep choosing the same section. So I'm going to drag over here to the US. Here we have our search criteria. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to zoom in. So I'm going to use my zoom in function. And there we have the Seattle area, kind of nice and center. Under coordinates, I'm going to click Use Map. And that's going to define the space that's already selected here on screen. And if I go over here and click Zoom Out, you can see that all the area that was off screen was not selected. Now I can pick these data points and I can move them to ensure that I have as small an area as possible for my initial selection. And this is just going to help me to limit the amount of options I'm seeing when I click on my data sets. So here I used the use map. If I wanted to wipe out these coordinates, I can just click clear coordinates and then click add coordinates again. And it's always just going to take your four points of wherever you're zoomed in on your map. Under data sets, I have a lot of different options here. In this case, we want digital elevation. I can choose to use that Aster Global Dem information, or I can use the SRTM data. I am going to try to use the Aster Global Dem data. So I have a selection made, and I'm going to click on Results. And sure enough, you can see here we have several coordinates selected. Whenever it gives you a coordinate, it's always going to be based on one of the corners of that map area. So up here, you can see where my cursor is pointing. It's going to keep showing me coordinates. So up here in this upper right area, you can see as I move across this section here, we go from 48 to 47 degrees. And as I move this way, we go from 123 to 122. So here we have this junction point between 47 and 48 and 23 and 22. We know that that's the corner of this map section. And whereas on the national map, it's always going to describe what's up here and the, what these two coordinates actually face against. In this one, it's taking the inside, not the outside. So it's still the same square. It just has a different description of where they're describing its location. So same as the national map, I have this little footprint. And it's going to show me exactly what data it's going to represent. And as we saw at the national map, it's the same geographical location. I also have the option to show me what the footprint of the actual elevation data is going to look like. While the national map did not require any login credentials. In order to get data from Earth Explorer, one will have to sign up with an account. But once an account has been created, we click on Download Options. And you can see there is simply a standard download set for the Aster data set. And the Aster data is a pretty small data file format, so it's nice and compact. We're going to go back to our data sets. And this time, we're going to unselect Aster and select one of our SRTM files. And here we have one arc second global, non-void filled, and void filled, and water body data. Here is a list, if we click on our information link, on what the difference between those three formats are. The non-void filled is just that. There's going to be missing areas of data in the high mountains. However, some work was done 
by NASA in order to clean up some of the coastlines and fill in some small areas. In the void filled area, it describes that they specifically went in and used interpolation data to fill in the missing information. And using the SRTM data, one arc second, whereas with the void filled, most of the world is still only contained in a three arc second coverage. This one is a worldwide coverage of one arc second that includes void filled information. So we are going to select our one arc second global and click on results. And in our results information, you can see we have our same section that we had found previously with the aster data. So we're going to click on our download options. And you can see in this case, there are several different file formats that we could choose from. We could choose a, a BIL file, a DTED file, which we have not come across yet, and a GeoTIFF file. So I'm going to select GeoTIFF. The GeoTIFF is an actual image file representing an actual grayscale image, but also contains coordinates to help map that image into the coordinate system. So to recap our first episode, we discussed what data is contained in a DEM, vector, or raster data. We discussed what that data represents, a set of coordinates, and elevation information. We discussed what the typical file formats we're going to come across are, including IMGs, ADFs, ASCs, BILs, DEMs, HTTs, and our library archives, ZIPs, and RARs, in addition to potential image file formats, including PNGs and TIFFs. We discussed where we're going to be able to find this information, including the Earth Explorer, the USGS National Map, the Viewfinder website, and for otherworldly information, we can get things such as the Mars MOLA. Links to these websites will be provided in this tutorial's information section. And finally, we discussed what the difference in the DEM data is in terms of the resolution of the data, all the way from three arc seconds to one arc second to one third and one ninth, and the resolution those represent and how finite the elevation details they contain happen to be. And then our data collection types, the SRTM data, ASTER data, and the LIDAR data. In episode two, we'll take this data that we downloaded and we'll discuss the programs necessary to view that data and interpret it. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video as we continue our process of creating a geographic-based custom region in SimCity 4.